Hello there, it is Tyler here, and once again, I'd like to get into doing some presets. So we're going to continue our little citrus preset pack that we were working on. And my hope soon is that I will have a bit more time to continue making some presets. That's kind of the plan here. Not just in citrus, but in other things too. So keep an eye out for that in the near future. But for now, let's jump into a citrus patch, and we are going to make something like a Moog bass, just a three oscillator pretty simple setup emulating some of those simple analog sort of bass sounds that would come from that era again taking a bit from one of the old steve porcaro tutorial videos like i did with the previous synth horn but anyway back to this bass there's nothing too wild here but we're going to go ahead and get ourselves a default patch and our first move will be to send that first operator right out of the filter. And of course, out of the synthesizer as well. Then for that operator, we're going to make this a square wave. And we'll turn off our filter, bring that cut off all the way up. So we just have a pretty much basic square wave here. We'll go into main and I'm going to turn the Gibbs off, which is going to... Just make those squares a bit more actually square. And for operator one, let's bring it down two octaves, so down to 0.5. So we have a nice low sound, and then we'll go into two. We're gonna make this a saw wave instead of a square. Have that one octave up from our other one, route that out as well. Now those two together. Kind of just sounds like a saw wave, but there is a bit of that square in there. And we're going to go ahead and do some random phase on each of them to make it so that it's more evident that there is a difference. Do the opposite sort of thing here. Again, just kind of keeping those phases out of phase from each other because if they were analog hardware, obviously nothing would be lined up very well. Things would be detuned from each other, and we're going to try to emulate that. Because with something like Citrus, very digital, everything is just correct all of the time, and to emulate something analog, you kind of have to fake some of those imperfections. And we are, in fact, going to do some detuning from each other, a little bit of random pitch for Oscillator 2. I'm going to hold Alt, and then up in the top right, you'll be able to see that I'm going to go down, I'm going to hold Alt, and just come down 1% here. So it's barely anything, and I'll go up on the other side, just 1%. And so this doesn't even look like there is a change here, but if I hit a bunch of notes, there's obviously some detuning there. And we don't even want that much in it, so we're going to turn down the pitch envelope here. So at most, it's very slightly detuned. I'll pull it up. But that fattens up the whole sound quite a bit because of those imperfections. And we'll copy this and go over to the operator 3 because we'll have the same sort of thing happening here for the pitch. Paste it. I'll have it at a different value, though. And change that curve a little bit, too, and put that in. Make that a, we'll go with a square. We could have done any shape, really. This is just kind of a little bit on the top. Probably bring it down a little bit, too. But now we have one at a low octave, then an octave up, and then another octave up. And we're just kind of building something that we'll be able to filter off. And it's not a perfect exact replica of a Moog oscillator or filter once we get to that part because really it's going to be practically impossible to do so in a timely or reasonable manner. It's possible, but it just isn't quite reasonable to expect something like Citrus to be able to make something as purely analog as a Moog, for instance. But that, of course, does not mean you can't get great sounds out of Citrus emulating that sort of thing. It's just not exactly the same. Anyway, though, let's move on to the filter. We're going to get into a low pass. We'll use a Mango low pass, turn the drive down. And this would be where you would have your Moog filter, which is always great, but we have a different simulated filter here. 
which is just a nice low pass and it can work plenty well. We'll make ourselves a volume envelope first, just so that that is there. We'll leave a little bit on here as far as like attack and sustain and everything and we'll use the main tab to basically remove that. Don't want much of that coming through at all, but just to have it so that that is easily adjustable from the main tab can be worth it sometimes. And we'll be able to do the same thing for the filter, which let's give that an envelope as well. I don't want the release on there really. I guess we could put it up so that it is present. I don't think we would really need it, but it's there technically. So if we want to change that in the future with release here or adjust it in this filter tab, the options available. We could add in a bit of resonance, maybe drive on there, depending on how you want the sound to be. I'm going to keep drive on, but just minimal. And this is where you'd basically be able to shape your sound. The cutoff and envelope are going to give you how much of that top comes in, how much the cutoff will travel, etc. And if we wanted, we could go ahead and link the cutoff to the Mod X, give that a shape here to travel, set it in the middle so that we can just offset that again from the front panel. And we could also go in and add a bit of effects. The effects will have just that chorus on. I'll leave it on the default. But I can just add a little bit more of that fatness. You'll see the thicker lines because technically there is some detuning. But that's nice with a little bit of that fatness. We could throw on a bit of reverb. Just a slight bit. If you want to finalize it with that sort of stuff. But variations on this can get you all sorts of different sounds and you'll be able to edit them with the volume and filter envelopes on the front and that X we'd link to the filter cutoff. But at this point, we have a nice little addition to our pack that we've been working on over quite a long while now. But the download link will be in the description. Feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and of course, all that fun stuff. And I'm thinking we'll be back pretty soon to continue with some of these Patchmaker Patchmaker videos and expand upon other videos where we can make some presets and all sorts of stuff. I want to get back into doing this sort of thing. So that's all for now. Bye-bye.